Praise God. You may be seated this morning. It's good to see you today. Uh, we are dealing with the 18th chapter of the book of Matthew. We are uh, involving ourselves in, in uh, discussing honesty and humility and forgiveness. And of course, we have been addre addressing the area of, of humility today. And Without humility and honesty, you can never really have true forgiveness. And so uh, we will not get to honesty today, but we'll, we'll finish up on, on the area of humility. Amen this morning. Well, I give you would to turn your Bibles. We're going to read about eight verses of chapter 18 here together. The 18th chapter, verses 1 through 8. Our God is a great God. Actually, we'll read down to verse number 7. Amen. 18, chapter 18, chapter, verse. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right. The Bible says, at that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Uh, I believe that question has been repeated many, many, many times since the disciples asked it. Amen. And then Jesus called a little child to him and set him in the midst of them. And said, Surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever receives one little child like this in my name receives me. And whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. I think we need to get an understanding of that verse because it sounds pretty serious to me. Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come, but woe to, to that man by whom the offenses come. Amen. So last week we began this study on humility. And uh, it's based upon a question that is asked by the disciples in this first verse, who's the greatest in the kingdom? Uh, I'm going to tell you right now that humility must be threaded through our entire life. Uh, that somebody that can't be humble cannot forgive. And somebody that has been offended can, uh, cannot receive forgiveness because of of uh, the issues they have in the area of humility. Uh, it's a tendency of man to always blame the other person. Yesterday, uh, we had two services at KCDC, and uh, we just felt to talk in the area of, uh, uh, of you know, accepting responsibility for our actions. Of course, that's not how we defined it yesterday, but, amen, there's an inherent... Uh, trait in all of us in this room, an inherent trait. We've had it since Adam. And that is to always focus on what somebody else has done or to lay at their feet uh, whatever wrong has committed and, and absolutely absolve ourselves from any of the blame. Hallelujah. It's the woman who you gave to me. That's typical of a man to pass it off and say it's all the woman's fault. But the women are no better because they just turn around and say, it was that serpent. It's that serpent. Amen. Am I responsible? Why were you even listening to the serpent then? <laughs> Amen. But uh, we are all guilty. We are all guilty of uh, in these areas as far as I walk with God. One of the things that has to go for us to have really relationship with one another is selfishness, okay? It, it has to go. It, it, it's not compatible with having a relationship. And that would include a husband and a wife, 
That would include a brother and sister in Christ. With selfishness in our life, uh, it just you're not going to have a healthy relationship. Uh, may, I, may I say that many people are very self-absorbed. Uh, they just, they just, everything's about themselves. Uh, everything's about themselves. And, and uh, again, you cannot healthily, uh, is that a word? Yeah, I, I just made it up. So, Daniel, put that in your dictionary, please. And, uh, but uh, in order for us to impact people, one of the things that must be laid aside is our own selfishness. And if you don't think you have selfishness in your heart and in your life, you are deceiving yourself. It is a constant battle that you and I have to address. Amen. And therefore, when Jesus begins to speak to his disciples after the question about who's the greatest in the kingdom... Amen. He is going to come against some things and, and say some things to them that really they were not wanting to hear. Amen. They, yeah, I told you last week, if you just follow the life of Peter, you will see that Peter, he walked on water. He was one of the fellows that went up on the Mount of Transfiguration. Amen. He got a gold coin out of fish's mouth. Have you ever, has that ever happened to you, Leo? <laughs> happened to Peter. And... Uh, Amen. And, I, you know, Peter was the kind to let you know. He was not the kind to just not say anything about it. And, I mean, he's the one up on the Mount of Transfiguration when God is on him with his glory. And he's up there saying, okay, what can we do to memorialize this place? Hey, let's build three tabernacles here. You know, you know hey, Peter, why don't you shut up and just enjoy what God is doing right at the moment? And that's, you know, we, we, we are like that. We're like that. People are so funny. Turn to neighbor and say, man, you're so funny. <laughs> Some of you were, did that half-heartedly. If you can't laugh at yourself, you got issues. You really do. My God. You've never done anything funny in your life? Or you're just so, so full of pride, you just can't admit it. I just, just relate one for myself here to make you feel better. Many years ago, and of course there's been some a lot recently than many years ago, but we, uh, lived, we lived next door, my parents lived, my wife's already laughing because she knows exactly what I'm talking about here. <laughs> I wasn't laughing that day. <laughs> we, uh, we just got married, and we were getting ready to go on our honeymoon, and my, my father had a, uh, a motor home, and we were going to travel with that. And uh, so we were getting ready, and uh, we had a sliding door over here, a patio door going to the outside. Well, I, I don't know why, but I was right behind my father, and he went through the door, and he shut the glass door. Not, not intentionally, to, but I, I mean, I just acted like there was no door there <laughs> until my head met the glass. <laughs> And uh, now I'm telling you, my mother, my father, and my wife, they thought that was funny. <laughs> but I'm the one that had the knot on my head. And uh, in, in other words, I was the brunt of their humor at that moment. And uh, so it, it is funny now. I, I'm long removed from that moment, so it, it was funny. So if you're ever by a glass door, just make sure... It's open. Don't try to walk through a door that's not open. Because I promise you, amen, it will be quite an experience. Hallelujah. If you can't laugh at yourself, you just, you really, you really need to be able to laugh at yourself. In fact, I really think when you, you have humility, you find it a little easier to laugh at yourself than when you're filled with pride. You know, True humility, and, and I'm just sort of reviewing at the moment, is not thinking meanly about yourself. You know, I'm a no good, rotten skunk. Really, true humility is just simply not thinking about yourself at all. If the focus of your life is all about you, you ain't got a humility. If it's all about what you are and, and how great you are, uh, it's, it is not humility. True humility 
is knowing yourself. Everybody say knowing yourself. yourself. You got to know yourself. You have to know yourself. If you know yourself, you're, you're not going to continue to repeat the same mistakes. All right? If you know yourself, okay? You got to know yourself, and then you have to accept yourself. And that's where this humor comes in. If you can't accept yourself today, I mean, you know, I, I, I make the joke about myself, and, and I'm not uncomfortable with it in the least bit. You know, you know, some people sing in the shower. I think in the shower. And my wife has said to me a number of times, you know, ask me why it takes me. She says, I get out of the shower, you know, pretty quick. Well, okay, great. But, but my standard answer for her is this. Have you ever seen the landmass of Australia? You ain't going to get it washed in just a couple minutes. You know, and I realize, you know, I mean, I, I don't mind it. You know, I am what I am. There are some things about myself I can change. I can lose weight. That's something I can do. Uh, I broke my nose quite a few years ago. And if you look, if I take my glasses off, it's very prominent. I used to have a fine looking nose. And God says, well, we take care of that business. And so I broke it on a hard headed German. <laughs> Gave him a concussion. Hallelujah. We both spent the night in the hospital in the same room. Well, amen. That's back when I was young and actually played some softball. But anyways, and uh, I remember ever since then, just if, if I take my glasses off, it's just, it, it just, it's got a bump. It's rough, you know. And uh, so I talked to the doctor one day. He says, hey, Doc, what can we do about this? Oh, I can shave it off for you. I just didn't even like the word shave. You know, and I, I don't mind shaving the hair off my face. I, I want nothing to do with shaving cartilage down. He said, no, nah, I'm fine like I am. This will work for me. Amen. That just, just, just shows me I'm a man, man. I got the scars of life on me. Hallelujah. So you, you need to accept yourself. You know, you know, the enemy of our soul has been doing this for a long time. Amen. And he started in the garden when he told Eve, you'll be like God. What he was literally saying to Eve was, you're not good enough. And so we live in a world that is always told, you're not good enough. And Revlon and Mary Kay and the whole business, amen, lives, lives with that, you're not good enough. Come on, ladies and gentlemen, you need to accept yourself. Does not the Bible say that we were beautifully and wonderfully made? It doesn't it say that. Amen. God literally in, in, in Exodus chapter 4 and verse 11 takes responsibility for the deaf. Amen. The mute. He takes responsibility for that. So he has a purpose for every last one of us. And so true humility, true humility is again... Knowing yourself and accepting yourself. My God, if you can't, man, I'm just harping on this and I got to get humility done today. That's why you don't get along with people. Because you got issues on the inside about yourself. And if you could ever accept yourself, hallelujah, it would make it much easier to accept other people. Hallelujah. And so knowing yourself, you got to accept yourself and uh, being yourself, everybody say being myself. Being myself. I, I can't be you and you can't be me. Amen. But being myself, I must be my best self for the glory of God. Just to wear rags doesn't prove you got humility, all right? That has nothing to do with humility. You always need to give God your best. All right, all right. So, and then, of course, we talked last week about avoiding two extremes. Amen. Moses said, who am I? Amen. And then the other extreme is what we read in Romans 12, where uh, we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think. So it's gotta be, there's got to be a balance there, ladies and gentlemen. And so, again, when the question came up, who is the greatest, what did Jesus do? He took a child from their midst. Okay, now understand, these are adults, okay? And he pulls a child out of the midst. And he brings that child up and 
He's basically going to say to them, except you become as this little child. Amen. Now, it doesn't say it in there, but in my mind, there was some adults there. There were some disciples there doing a little grumbling at that moment. You know, this is not what we thought he was going to say was the greatest was. Amen. So he brings this child up. Amen. And there are, are, are some things I want to point out to you about a child. In Matthew 18 and verse 6, Jesus said, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin. And I'm just going to stop there. Okay. Here's, here's something that you need, and, and most of us understand this. Children have a tremendous amount of trust. They trust. Uh, I mean, to, it can even be to their detriment, you know, in, in the evil world that we live in. But they trust. I mean, they trust what you say. If you say you're going to get ice cream, you better go get ice cream because they're trusting you. And, and if you don't do what they said and they say, how come we're not getting ice cream? Immediately you're, you're getting all worked up about it because, amen, the child sort of called you out. <laughs> you said you were going to do it. And they trusted what you said. All right. Don't get all over them because they're saying something to you. You told them that. And they trust what you say. They believe what you say. If you tell them there's a monster under their bed, man, you're going to have a, another person in your bed with you that night. Because they're going to believe what you said. And so there is a tremendous amount of trust in an unspoiled child. I need to... I needed to add that in there when we're talking about characteristics of humility. An unspoiled child has a tremendous amount of trust and a tremendous amount of dependence on you. Are you here this morning? They, 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 they depend upon you. They, they really do. They, they depend upon you. They look to you, okay? And, and not only do they have a tremendous amount of dependence upon you, but they have a desire to make others happy. You know, if, if you tell them that when daddy gets home, he really likes your paintings and your drawings. Guess what that child's going to do before daddy gets home? They're going to want to paint him a picture. And they're going to come to show it to daddy because they want to please daddy. That's what children are like. Now, you notice something else about children. There's an absence of boasting or selfishness. There's, there's not that desire to be greater than others in a child. Now, I'm talking about children that aren't selfish, okay? Okay? Are, are, are you all here still? You know, by nature, we're rebels. Every last one of us in this room, by nature, are rebels. We want, we want to be celebrities. We want recognition instead of being servants. You know what it said about it? You know, if a child gets up there, amen, and, and, and does something, you, you, you watch mama and daddy, their buttons pop, face beams. You know, they're, they're, they're having a little vicarious -ish situation going on here. Amen. Uh, because they, they feel real good about it. But really, a child, it wants to please. It's dependent. There's an absence of boasting. Uh, there's an absolute trust. Hallelujah. You want to be the greatest in his kingdom, you need to have those attributes. You really do. You need to absolutely trust God. You have to have a dependence in God. You have to be, have a desire to make others happy. And there has to be an absence of boasting and focusing on yourself. Now, now, I want us to go back. I think it's verse number th three. Verse three, okay? How many know what John 3, 5 says to us? Unless a man is born again of the water and spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of, of heaven. Now, if you're using the King James, it says accept. Whenever you come across the word unless and accept in the scripture, those are conditional words. So what follows that word, 
Okay, God is expecting us to do. And so we read here in verse 3, Assuredly I say to you, everybody say, Unless you are converted and become as little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. I want you to think on that for a moment. We, we focus on John chapter 3, verse 3 and 3, 5, which are true and accurate, and these are things that are, are something that we do in order to enter God's kingdom. But God is telling us here, if you do not become like a little child, you'll not enter my kingdom. Well, let's think on that for a moment. I want you to think on it now. Where are you becoming a little child? How, how in your relationship with God are you being like a little child? Because he's saying unless our thinking changes, okay, we're really not going to enter his kingdom. Now for you and I as adults today, we, we're pretty independent. We do what we want to do. We make our own decisions. And so what God says to us is, I'm going to reduce you to the level of being a child. And if you can trust me, if you can depend upon me, if it's not all about you, you're going to become a servant in my kingdom and you're going to be great. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you the biggest issue any church has is the issue I'm talking about right now. We got a lot of pride. We don't got a lot of humility. You know, and again, when you have pride, you are greatly susceptible to offense. Did y'all hear that? It's your pride that is the biggest issue you will have when it comes to offense. And so if you can do something about your pride, amen, it's going to relieve you from a lot of that offense business. All right, turn to your neighbor and say, help me, God. Not that, not that they're God. And so uh, we are told in the scripture, except we become like a little child, unless, except we're converted, except we are change, our thinking changes, we're really not going to make it. Now, I want to make it to heaven. Yes. Amen. Amen. I want to make it to heaven. I, I want to really trust God. I get stuck on this issue right here. I want to trust him. Can you trust him when you're in the valley? Or is it much easier to trust on the mountaintop? Can you trust him when everything's going against you? Or are you wondering in yourself, what, what is God doing? What, what is his plan here? In fact, I think he sort of deserted me here. And, and it, you know, it's what it's all about, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you would go with me quickly to Matthew 23, 11. Matthew 23, 11 is not on, it's not a verse I gave you, Ginger. Matthew 23, 11. In fact, Matthew 23, Jesus has quite a lot to say about the Pharisees. He calls a bunch of hypocrites more than once. But it, it says here, but he who is the greatest among you shall be your servant. Okay. Now, I'm just, just for your information this morning, the word child and the word servant are the same word in Aramaic, all right? And that is the words that Jesus spoke in. He spoke Aramaic, all right? And so he couples the word child and servant together. If you're going to be great in his kingdom, you are going to become a servant he blends these two concepts together, a human child and a child of God. It doesn't matter if you're 85 or if you're 20, in God's eyes we are all his children. And he blends these two concepts together and basically says to us, amen, the example, amen, of humility and greatness is found in a little child. Now, If you go with me to Romans 14 and 1.
And so as I look around this room this morning, I must understand that you are children of God. Okay? Couples, human child with the child of God, no matter what their age may be. And as a believer, I must accept you. All right? And we'll talk about this in just a few moments here. And, and I have a responsibility to minister and to receive all of God's children. All right? Now, in Romans 14 and 1, it says, Receive one who is weak in the faith, but not to disputes over doubtful things. I want to tell you something today, and we haven't necessarily, well, we did actually read it this morning. But, but there are things that are not to the edifying of the body. They're not to the edifying of an individual of God. In fact, may it, it is really true today that not everybody's faith is of the same uh, strength, if I could put it like that. There are weak believers, amen. And the Bible tells me I'm not to dispute over doubtful things. I'm not to dispute over them. I'm not to, I'm not to, there's just some stuff you just don't even want to get into discussion about. All right? It, it's not worth the time. It's not worth the effort. It's not worth the aggravation. If what you promote produces strife, may I say to you this morning, your spirit's wrong, and possibly what you're trying to promote is wrong too. All right? And so, you got to understand, you're not in this thing by yourself. And that around you are people that are strong, and, and that you ain't going to phase them, you ain't going to affect them, but there's also weak believers. And you're disputing about things that really don't amount to a hill of beans can affect them. And again, amen, you need to understand that. May I say today, if you're always right, and nobody else is ever right, you got a serious issue. All right? I'm just, I'm just talking to you right now. All right? You got to understand that. If we don't have the ability... To say, yeah, I was wrong. You know, some people can be wrong and they'll never even apologize for it. Or they'll never come back and correct the wrong. That's steeped in pride. That's steeped in their own selfishness. I want to correct wrong that I have done. And if I'm not aware of it, I want to be brought to that place so that I can correct it. This is all about being a child of God. This is all about becoming like that child in his kingdom. What I say and what I do affects other believers. And amongst us today are people that are very, very fragile. And Paul tells us not to dispute. All right? May I say to you this morning, you're not going to like this, but it's a serious matter to cause a child to go astray. Serious matter. Oh, you may survive. But you may be, leave somebody else bleeding in the dust. And they may never recover. It's a serious, this is a serious issue, ladies. We, we just don't come to have, have church and get our, get our Sunday morning fix. We're in a kingdom. We're in a kingdom. And it, it's not your kingdom and it's not my kingdom. It's his kingdom. And the greatest in his kingdom are servants. The greatest in his kingdom are people that have learned how to serve others and minister to others. Amen. They're the kind of people that, amen, they, they'll put you on their shoulders so that you can see over the crowd. You remember those days, fathers, when your little ones, were, you were at a parade and there's a crowd of people there. And so your, your kids are struggling. They can't see nothing. And you just hoisted them up on your shoulders and... They're sitting there, amen, uh, basically their hands are on top of your head. They're probably doing a little, little, you know, bongo on you or something like that. And they're watching, they're watching what's going on. 
in the kingdom of God. Everybody's responsibility is to lift somebody higher than when they came into the kingdom of God. Amen. That should be your purpose when you come today. Not, to, not for you to get jacked up, but for you to help somebody get higher than they were before they came into this house. Hallelujah. 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 In Romans 14 and 13, it says, Therefore let us not judge one another anymore. We'll resolve this not to put a stumbling block or a cause to fall any in our own or to or a cause to fall in our brother's way. Okay. First Corinthians 8 and 9 says, But beware lest somehow this liberty of yours becomes a stumbling block to those who are weak. If you cause another believer to trip up, I'm just gonna tell you, right, you have an issue with God. And it's only going to be resolved when you come to him and ask him to forgive you and you change your behavior. Hallelujah. Isn't that what we tell, require our children to do? You know? My, my, dear, my dear wonderful daughter, I remember how ugly I could be, Brother Leo. I wouldn't suggest you do this, but we were, we were sitting at the table saying grace one evening. I don't know if we had spaghetti. We had something on the plate. And this time I didn't close my eyes as we prayed. And so I'm praying with my eyes wide open. And my dear sweet daughter puts her nose down there to smell what we're eating. And this, this, this impulse came over me. And I just sort of helped her get closer to what she was smelling. I'm not sure that's something I should have done, but, you know, help me, God. To, uh, I love my kids. And, and, and my number one priority for my children was not that they had the best clothes, not that they had money jingling in their pockets, not even that, that they were the most accepted kid at their school. But the number one thing for me is, do they have a relationship with God? That's number one. Amen. Everything else is secondary. Everything else is just some kind of added bonus to, to what God is doing. In the, I'm here to tell you, brother and sister, we're in a kingdom. Amen. God help us as parents to lead our children correctly. And if you have, if you have done things that were wrong with your kids, you got to man up and ask their forgiveness. You got to man up and say, I'm sorry. I did not act like a father should act. Or I'm sorry, as your mother, I was not acting as I should act. Are, are you still in the house? My God, help us. Hallelujah. You see, true humility thinks of others and not of itself. And uh, I don't want to trip somebody up because of my own stupidity. Hallelujah. I don't want to be a poor example to others. Amen. I don't know about you, but I, I, I look at my life many, many times. I, I review my days in my mind. I review what I said. Those things I can remember. And I review my acts, what I did. And there are times that I've said things and done things that have... I, I know it's, it's just not me. It's God that sort of says, okay, son. We're having a little review right now. Okay, do you remember what you said there? Yeah. Do something about it. You remember what you've done there? Yeah. Do something about it. Amen. This is, it's, all about, it's all about learning to humble ourselves in the presence of an almighty God. What is it? Is it Hosea? What, what, what prophet is that that says there are three things that are required of you? I, I don't, I'm not sure which one it is right now. One of the Old Testament prophets, amen, and one of, them, one of the things he required, or he said is required, that we walk humbly before our God. Hallelujah. I'm talking about this morning true humility. Thinking of others rather than ourself. Let, let, me, let me give you four attitudes that you can, ha can, can have, amen, as we have read through the, the scriptures in Matthew 18. Okay, let's, here's, here's the first one. Let's go back to the third and fourth verse of this, this chapter again. 
Let's go back here. Four attitudes. There are four different attitudes we can have towards a child and consequently towards true humility. Okay. Surely I say to you, unless you are converted and become as a little children, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. Therefore, whoever humbles himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. All right. Number one attitude. We can seek to become like children in true humility as to the Lord. All right. Number two. Verse number five. Whoever receives one little child like this is, in my name, receives me. Okay. Now, we can only do it or we can only receive them because Jesus told us we had to do it. And if that's how you serve God, he told me I had to do this. You need to adjust some things in your heart. You really do. Verse 6, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin. Again, we can have an attitude if we are not careful, we will cause them to stumble. That's not what we want to see. Hallelujah. There's three of the four here this morning. Turn to your neighbor and say, help me, God, help me. Well, look at verse 10. It says to us, take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones. Fourth attitude. We can despise. It's a dangerous thing to look down on a child. Because God values them highly. I would not want to be a child abuser. You may get a, a, a society upset at you. But if you don't resolve that issue with God. My God. You're in a heap of trouble. More trouble than you ever counted on having. Why? Because their angels are always before the Father. Hallelujah. He cares for them. We live in a world where there is a lot of child neglect. Physical, verbal, mental. Amen. May I throw this at you today? If you're not trying to bring your children up and nurture them in the ways of God, I realize each of them have their own will. You're neglecting them. You're neglecting them. All right. I just, I got about five minutes left to go here. There you have it. That was my five-minute warning. <laughs> All right. Let's go to verse 7 and 9 of this chapter. There's, there's a cost of humility, ladies and gentlemen. Woe to the world because of offenses. For offenses must come, but woe to them that by man whom the offense comes. Then it says this, if your hand or your foot causes you to sin, cut it off. Cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into the life lame or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet be, to be cast into everlasting fire. And if your eye causes you to sin, plug it out, cast it from you. It's better for you to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hellfire. Ever read that stuff before? I hope you haven't literally tried to practice that. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 29 and verse 30, Jesus says in the Sermon on Mount, something very similar. It says, if your right eye causes you to sin, pluck it out and cast it from you, for it is more profitable for you that one of your members perish than for your whole body to be cast into hell. All right? Now, true humility begins with examining yourself. And true humility also continues with self-denial. The cost of humility is the examination of yourself. And it's not hacking off a limb or plucking out an eye. 
all right? Because any physical amputation of your body is not going to change your heart. And that is the issue. So what Jesus basically is saying to us is, you need to have some spiritual surgery. Anybody enjoy surgery? Brother Tim, you get in line for surgery, brother? Couldn't wait. Amen. I remember getting my tonsils out when I was about six or seven, somewhere in there. Amen. I was so stinking disappointed because I loved ice cream, and I don't remember getting any ice cream in the hospital at all. You know, I thought that was supposed to be my reward. You know, and I have not enjoyed any surgery ever since. Hallelujah. So, you got to take care of you. As your pastor, I can't take care of you. I can't do what you're supposed to do. That, it, my responsibility is to be the watchman. It's your responsibility to run to the fort. Run to the wall. That's your responsibility. Amen. Once I have given my responsibility, my, amen, I, I'm done with the matter. Uh, there are some people I leave alone. Because they never listen. They're going to do it their own way no matter what. So I leave them alone. And I have fulfilled my responsibility because I have warned. I preach pretty much almost every Sunday. I don't do this to get a check. Amen. I really don't. I don't do this. I, I, I mean, I want, to get, I want to eat and I want to have a place to sleep and a car to drive and all that nice stuff and, and provide for my wife. But... I do this thing to help people to walk with God. Amen. You have a great responsibility to become like a little child. All of us in this room have a great responsibility to humble ourselves. Be careful what you say to others. All right? Don't be so harsh with your words. Learn to soften your words. Get off your high horse and get on your knees. If we were to do those kind of things, it would, it would solve a lot of issues. Solve a lot of issues. And that all begins with the self-examination. My right arm's giving me an issue. I've got to do something about it. My right eye, and whatever it may be. Because I'm here to tell you, whether you understand it or not, we are mutually dependent upon each other. If you think you're going to go to heaven all by your lonesome, you don't understand the word of God. We are connected together. We are a body of believers. Amen. And the eye doesn't tell the ear how to, how to, to uh, hear. And the ear doesn't tell the eye how to see. And, you know, all of us are mutually, amen, dependent upon one another. If one falls, we all fall. If one is praised, we're all praised. That's how it's supposed to be in the kingdom. Because it's all about him. And advancing his kingdom, not our agendas, but his kingdom. Hallelujah. Let's stand in this room this morning. So as, as a believer, I am to be a stepping stone Rather than a stumbling block. I'm going to be a stepping stone. I'm to help somebody get across the creek. Hallelujah. 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 Let's just, let's just talk to Jesus. Let's just talk to Jesus in this room right now. Help us, Jesus. Help me, God. Your word tells me I'm to become like a little child. Help me, God. Help me, God. I got to depend on you, Father. I got to depend on you, not myself, God. Not my own abilities, God. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Help us in this room today. Help me to help other believers, oh God, to get stronger, God. Help me to be a servant, oh God, to the, the people of God. Help me, God. Help me, God. It's not about me. It's not about my greatness, oh God. It's about you and how great you are. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the privilege it is to serve you and to walk with you, Lord. My God, help me to become like that little child. Help me, Father. I have an absolute trust in you, dependence upon you. A desire to please you and, amen, a desire, oh God, to, 
Amen. Not, not, not boast upon, oh God, what I do, but oh God, what you have done. And boast about your greatness and how you've changed our lives and what you've done to make us different. How you've delivered us, oh God. Hallelujah. How you, oh God, have worked so powerfully in our lives to make us who we are today. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help us, God. Help pride, oh God, to just crumble in your presence, Lord. For it is the very root of our problems, God. It is the root of our problems. Our pride is the root of our problems, God. Oh, God, and what it does is it causes you to stand at a distance. And I sure don't want you standing at a distance, Jesus. I want to be real close to you. I want to be real close to you, Father. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. God bless you this morning.